Oh, which, see, this way. was the thing, and then they'd get trips on the other side. Yeah. We take them off, turn it over, and recoat it, get trips on that side. <laughs> this is Kite 22, you're done. Because apparently yeah. it's really hard to, you have to really watch for what, and shape, you tape it, and do it. Mm. And then just as they're just kind of tacky, you pull the tape yeah, off, okay. and, it ta and it takes the grips with it. Yeah. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. I'm Nancy Furness and this is We've Got Issues. We're filming at Coquitlam City Centre Library and we would like to thank the library for providing us a venue to do the interviews. I'd also like to acknowledge that the interviews take place on the traditional, ancestral and unceded lands of Coquitlam First Nations. So we thank the Coquitlam Nation who continues to live on the lands and to care for the lands and the waters and all that lies above and below. So today we're joined by Mike Jennings from the Men's Shed Association of BC. So thanks so much for joining us today, Mike. It's a pleasure to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about the Men's Shed? Um, what is a Men's Shed? Fundamentally, a Men's Shed is uh, a group of men who are on a journey together. Mm. Um, it, it do, they are the Men's Shed. It's not a physical place. But hopefully they will wind up with a physical place or they'll find a place where they can meet regularly. How did Men's Shed get started? About 30 years ago, a woman in South Australia was having a problem with her, her father. He had had a, a heart attack and she couldn't get him interested in anything. Oh. Yeah, so um, he wasn't doing well, but she noticed that when he was fiddling with an old lawnmower with some of his friends, then there was a com camaraderie between them. And she built on that to make the first men's shed. And since then, there are over 1,200 men's sheds in, in Australia, 3,000 worldwide, of which 120 are in Canada, and 60 of those, over 60 of those, are in British Columbia. So Mike, can you tell us how did the Coquitlam Men's Shed get started? Uh, that, that's my story. Um, <laughs> I, in 2015, it became obviously I was going to be obvious that I was going to be retiring. And my colleagues knew what I was up against. I'm a single guy living in a small apartment and uh, I would be cry climbing up the walls after a few weeks. So, most of every, everything that I did my, for fun, I had a workshop at work that when we closed the doors at 4.30, I would go into the workshop, build canoes, kayaks, small boats, oh. loved doing that stuff. And that, I would stay there till 10 o'clock at night, then go home, come back in the morning, start work. So everything was tied up in the business and I was going to be retiring. And this did not feel good. And it's a big my, transition. Yeah. Yeah, it's a life-changing life transition. And I wasn't going to be long somewhere where I'd been for the last 25 right. years. So that sense of belonging was going to be missing. And so uh, one of my colleagues uh, realized what was up, up against, and he heard about men's sheds, told me about them. Mm. So I phoned Doug Mackey in Winnipeg, the guy that started the first men's shed in North America, and said, Doug, Where's the men's shed in Coquitlam? And he said, there isn't one. You better start. Oh, one. there you go. Yeah. So um, I did. I talked to a couple of friends. I said, I heard about these men's sheds and let's get together. And I called Making House, uh, Heritage House in Coquitlam, and said, 
have you got a room we could use? And they said, yes. But we didn't have any money in the kitty. We were just starting right. out. So, um, so they said, yeah, we, we'd be glad to have you. So we met, had a few meetings there, four or five of us. Doug Mackey happened to be traveling to Vancouver, so he came and joined us uh, for one or two of the meetings. Um, and then uh, it was a bit posh for us. So we moved in. We moved into Blue Mountain Park, a picnic table. Okay. The weather was nice. We had some bocce balls. So we would discuss what we wanted to do. Over a game of bocce. And um, we'd play bocce. So that, which is good for our health, you know, mm. old men getting down and picking up more. Um, so after a while, oh, and during this time, we started meeting with the mayor and council and uh, with the health authority, anybody that would listen to us. Right. And they were all interested in our story. And today that's so much greater than it was back in 2015. But, uh, um, and we asked them to be our allies, to help us find a place where we could right. have our shed. When the weather wasn't good, we started going to the Sunstar restaurant and having breakfast together. Mm. And we continue to do that to this day. So yeah. we can, the Coquitlam Men's Shed can always be found on a Tuesday morning at 10.15 in the Stun Star restaurant on Lougheed Highway. That's good to know. <laughs> All these years later. Uh. Yeah. Um, so uh, after a lot of being a men's shed without a place, but we were that group of men right. on a journey together. We did a few, pro we managed to do a few projects. Benita Zerillo came along and said, would you, um, would, would, why don't you meet with the people from 3030 Gordon Avenue, which is the homeless shelter? So we met with the management and they said, we had a volunteer that helped, looked after our vegetable garden for us, but they don't seem to be around anymore. Is that something you could do? So we said, why not? Yes, wow. we did. That's and a great it was, opportunity to be part of the community there. Yeah. yeah. And when we when we would go there, we'd we'd run into people like uh, Terry Towner and mm -hmm. the city council because uh, the the councillors are obviously concerned what's happening in the homeless shelter. And the, right. we so we got to know each other like that. Then one day, Stuart uh, Richard Stewart called me and said, Mike, we have to talk. I'd like to introduce you to the CEO of the Red Door Housing Society, Susan Snell. And uh, I think they may have a place oh, wow. that you could use uh, for your men's shed. Mm. And uh, sure enough, on one of their properties, there was a, a shed probably made for a maintenance man to use, but not being used for that, just really? being used to store junk. And these places are all over the place. so. Um, uh, not being used for a very high purpose. Anyway, Susan said, yeah, you guys can have it if you can use it. And we, we, we said, yeah. You jumped on that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the Coquitlam Men's Shed has been very privileged ever since to uh, have a great relationship with the people uh, in the uh, uh, cooperative housing development. Um, we, the children come into the shed so we can put air in the their bicycle oh. tires, we can fix the scooters. Um, for a while, they, they would come and we ask us to cut out their names in blocks of wood. Wow. And there they put that up on the shelf. What a wonderful story. And yeah, the, yeah, they bring broken drawers. Lovely story. Mm. Um, a, the ki three children um, bring in two, sh two chairs and the dining room chairs but they've been left outside for a while right. and they were a bit rotten. Um, the backs were broken. I said, can you fix these? And the guy said, no, but we can help you fix them. Oh, so, that's wonderful. Uh, so they did. Yeah. And mum took, um, took videos of the kids doing this. Then she posted them on YouTube. Oh. Uh, and these are Syrian refugees. This, you know, that's on so many different levels you're connecting, right? That's a huge value to the community. I call it men's shed magic. Wow. You know, that's the is. only word I can think of. And I can give you examples from many sheds. But just to, to continue with the, this journey, mm. during the time that we were looking for a place, we're not very loyal. Uh -oh. We'd go, we're from Coquitlam, we'd go to Port Moody and oh. all, 
Oh. Yeah, and other places, anywhere we thought we could Moody? find, a, <laughs> anywhere we could thought we could find a show. Mm. And one of those places was the Station Museum, Jim Miller. Right. And Jim Miller thought it'd be a good idea to have a men's shed. Ah. And they happened to have a shed in the parking lot that was, again, nice shed being used to store. I would, so shouldn't say junk, but it's not very high purpose. And so he came along and said, what about a shed for Port Moody? And now there's a great shed in Port Moody. So each story is unique. Yeah. Yeah, right. each shed is unique. And Every shed, shed is, is different. I love, I love the story of um, this spring we started a shed in Lumbee. Mm -hmm. And typical, um, when you get going, they're meeting in a coffee shop. Right. And they're trying to put the word out in the community that, that this is what's happening. They've got a Facebook page. One day, a guy comes in, I think his daughter brought him, and he said, you guys aren't one and want to talk to me. He said, um, I'm going blind. Um, oh, I'm not going to fit in here. It's exactly said, who you want to talk to. So right? guy said, take a seat. Let's talk. Mm. So, see what you think. So they talked. And it turns out he make, loves building canoes. He's after my own heart. So he loves building canoes. And he's got everything that need, all the jigs, fixtures, and oh. everything for building canoes. But he can't do it anymore because right. he's blind. But he's got that knowledge, he's got the tools, he needs a place to feel needed. So a couple of weeks ago, the guy that kind of leads the, leads the shed mm. phoned me. And he, he told me that, um, that now they're, they're fine, still, it looks like they found a place for themselves. Uh, uh, wow. Like Coquitlam Shed. But they're, they're working in his workshop with his tools, his equipment, his materials, with him there mentoring them. Uh, and he is so happy. He's got a purpose and he's sharing his knowledge. And what more wonderful thing could, you know, the outcome? Yeah. But yeah. the guys, the, the, the other guys in the shed are so happy oh. as well. We, oh, we have more than two. We have Port Moody and Coquitlam in the Tri-Cities, right. but there's two in uh, Maple Ridge, uh, the Alouette Men's Shed and Burnett Street Men's mm -hmm. Shed, plus there's um, Langley and Chilliwack, and there's uh, four in Vancouver, North Vancouver, wow. uh, Richmond. Uh, so, so there's yeah. a lot of men's sheds out mm -hmm. there operating. Can you Talk a, a little bit about why it's for men only. What's the significance and the importance of having it for men? It's very inclusive of all men, but it's men only. Yeah, so um, men's sheds are really all about men's health and well-being. And there's a gr vulnerable group of men mm -hmm. who would never come to the shed if there were women in the shed. There are she sheds of women's sheds. There's two in British Columbia, one in Duncan, one in Vernon. And they're all about women's health. And I'm sure there's a vulnerable group of women who wouldn't go to the women's shed if there were men in there. So. Fair enough. I think you make a really good point and something that we don't talk about a lot, right? So why do you think there's so many more men's shed? Is there a greater need for men's shed than for women's sheds? Yeah, one of our men's sheds, uh, the leader of one of our men's sheds, in preparing for a grant, did a, a little study for himself and what, in his community, what was available for women versus what was available for men. And I know there were over 80, for women and children, over 80 facilities, uh, organizations available. And I can't remember oh. how many there were for men, but it was one or two. Oh, so, interesting. So um, there's a lot more resources and opportunities for women to um, sort of create those friendships and, and connections than there is for men. Yeah, and it's probably men's fault. You know, uh, <laughs> but the, the resources just aren't there. I found this myself when I went through a divorce many years ago. Mm -hmm. When I looked for resources, to, you know, I was hurting pretty badly. Uh, there weren't any. And men... Um, you know, traditionally maybe, maybe have been told, oh no, you don't show your emotions, mm. you don't need anybody else, you're strong. You're... And so this kind of breaks down some of those barriers and allows men to connect with each other. Yeah. Um, a men's shed is a respectful place, a welcoming place, a, a place where it's easy to make friends. Right. Once we're making, we make friends with each other and um, we're doing projects together, 
then we're working shoulder to shoulder, that's when men will start to talk. Right. And that's what the lady in South Australia observed over 30 years ago. It's a great observation. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about some of the kinds of things that happen at Men's Shed? Um, what sort of projects or activities do you do there? Not every shed has a workshop, but most BC sheds, I would say, have aspired to get uh, to some kind of workshop. Most of them are uh, woodworking shops, but it really doesn't matter what it's not sort of activities. Limited to woodworking. Yeah, it's up to the members and what they wanted to want to do. Um, I know of. Uh, a, a men's shed where after the meetings they bring out the guitars and start oh, playing lovely. music. Yeah, um, um, the Port Moody men's shed, uh, they have a nice workshop at the Station Museum, but um, on a Tuesday night they have a, a group that's interested in photography that get together. So it's unlimited, whatever the interests of the the men are. So it's sort of driven by the members yes. and if they bring a skill or an interest to the group then that's a great place to share? Yeah, a mentor and um, the shed needs everything because we're all volunteers. We, if we want to make the, sh the shed sustainable, right. <coughs> we need accountants to look after the, oh, okay. the, yes. the, the, the treasury, you know, we, we, we need people to promote the men's shed. So, uh, and we need people to brush the floor. Somebody's right. got to brush, well, we're supposed to clean up after ourselves, but you know, there's something for everybody to do. Um, and anybody that wants to learn somebody something, there's probably somebody there that can, can teach you, or you may have something to teach. In the case of the photography group, we're very fortunate. Uh, Steve Ray, I don't know if you know Steve Ray, but he's a professional photographer in the Tri-Cities and he has, I've learned so much from him. Wow. So it's a place to share your own skills and um, to learn new things as well, like you said. Yeah. So it's, um, what kind of, who goes to the men's shed? Like, who do you see going there and well, participating? Most men's sheds in British Columbia, I would say that they are probably 90, 95% grumpy old men. That's a good place for them then, right? <laughs> but, the, there are many young men as well. Mm -hmm. In fact, some of the uh, some of the men's sheds in British Columbia have been started by men in the twenties and thirties. Oh. Yeah, and sometimes I get the feeling that um, these young men, who maybe like I was thirty over thirty years ago, struggling after a divorce, mm. they at that time they need it more than we do. Hopefully they get out of that position and they don't need the shed or you know, they may move on to something else. And when they retire, they may find that they've lost the place where they belong. That was my feeling when I retired. I no longer belong in this company that I've been running for 25 years. It's a big and sometimes painful and traumatic transition if you come out of it and what do you do now? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I, what I found in the men's shed was, a, it was again, it was a place where I belong, uh, with, where there's camaraderie, where we have a laugh together, just like we did at work. Oh. Right. So it sounds like it's a lot about social interaction, mental health. Um, can you talk a little bit about what happened during COVID? I know we're beyond that now, but this kind of situation could happen again. How did you manage to keep going or, or what did you do? Well, there were times when the shed had to be closed mm -hmm. and that meant, uh, quite a few sheds that they, they closed for the whole COVID period. Um, most of them care, have come back to life again, right. um, stronger. Um, in the case of the Coquitlam shed, we made a di difficult decision. Um, we, especially my experience, being alone in a small apartment for a lot of time is dangerous. Right, it's not a healthy but, place to be. But yeah. I couldn't go to the shed, we couldn't get together at the shed, so we made the dis difficult decision to allow members to go and work in the shed okay. uh, individually. Mm -hmm. And um, while that has its problems too, it, I found it a tremendous relief to be able to get out of the apartment, go somewhere, make a bit of sawdust, do something useful for myself. Right. There are three things that we do at the shed. If we if we have a workshop, we work. We we have our own projects. I have a I have a boat, 
that that manufactures lots of projects. So yes, of course, I, I can go to the shed and do stuff for the boat. I will be this afternoon. The second is the shed itself needs a lot of attention. You need need when you get going, you need to build benches, mm -hmm. cupboards, and things like that. Now we're working together. I'm not working on my own. I'm working right. with you to accomplish something for the shed. And these are, these, are, these are great. This is when the camaraderie begins. But Men's Shed Gold is when somebody like Benita Zarillo, mm -hmm. who was instrumental in getting the uh, um, Coquilla Men's Shed going, uh, comes along and says, we, we need a bit of help with some, somebody needs a bit of help with something. So we, then we're helping some, doing something for the community. And that's where we go do that. And it has to be fairly simple. Oh, so that's really interesting. So you're saying now that you are approached sometimes to go and do something in the community, yeah. the men using your skills and, and tools and everything, and go out into the community. Can you talk about some examples? Like what types of things were you doing? Yeah, gladly. Um, uh, there's many. Um, well, like I mentioned Benita Zarillo, she came to the Port Moody Shed, tapped us on the shoulder and said, this is a couple of years ago now, there's a, a Ukrainian family moving into a, a home that needs some re small renovations. Right. Could you help? And when we come, when we finish that job and we're coming back to the shed, how do we feel? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've, uh, and that, fulfilled, happy, yeah, yeah. part of the community. We've had a sense of purpose. Yes. And that's really what it's all about. Mm. Yeah. No, that's, it's really interesting. When I first heard about Men's Shed, the picture in my mind was a tool shed where people came and borrowed tools and had tools. But I think you've just helped to explain that it's so much more about that. It's not necessarily about the tools. It's about mental health and friendship and companionship and connection. Um, would you like to see more men's sheds around? Oh, I, I've been very, uh, very uh, instrumental in pr promoting men's sheds. When mm. I first got involved, there were maybe five men's sheds in, right. in BC. 2017, um, so a guy um, from the Squamish men's shed, uh, Jim Gracie, decided it'd be a good idea if we had a provincial organization mm. because we could save in insurance costs. Oh, there's always the insurance. Right? So he asked yeah. me to be the president. So I've been very pretty involved ever since. So I've been involved in many of the, um, um, the creation of many men's sheds. And then a couple of years later, probably just before COVID, United Way came along and said, we're interested in what you're doing and we want to support you guys. Oh, how wonderful. And it was wonderful to be recognized for, we knew this, what yes. we're talking about, but that somebody else outside had recognized it and wanted to join in. And they're still big supporters of men's sheds uh, in BC and across Canada. Um, so it's evolved and yeah, right. them paying attention made us pay atten more attention to what we're doing. So we have 60 sheds in BC. Wow. In, in Australia, they have a men's shed for every 25,000 of population. So that probably equals about five men's sheds in, in Coquitlam. Wow, that's in, impressive. In so Ireland, they see the need. Yeah. In Ireland, they have one for every 15,000 of population. So we have a lot of work to do. Right, right. No, it's, so you've done some wonderful work and I just, is there anything else you wanted to share about men's sheds? Um, yeah, if anybody, uh, we, especially Port Coquitlam. Mm -hmm. uh, a few months ago we went into Port Coquitlam, we told a group of guys what men's sheds are about and there was some interest. But there's, as far as I know, there is no men's shed yet. So the guys in Port Coquitlam want to get hold of me and let's work together to bring a men's shed to Port Coquitlam. It's quite simple. We did it in Coquitlam, and if Coquitlam can do it, anybody can do it. And the progress, is, you don't have to rush. We don't like deadlines, but right. if you just keep putting one foot in front of the other, you may wind up with a wonderful space like Coquitlam. You might, might wind up with a fabulous space like Vernon, with 5,000 square feet wow. of workshop and socializing facilities. Uh, you might wind up like Vanderhoof, who own their own property. Um, so 
the sky really is uh, the limit. Um, when you get a group of guys together, they can put a man on the moon. Mm. They can easily start a man shot. That's a good point. And it's fun. And it's individual. It, it, how it looks depends on the people that are involved, yeah. and yeah. everybody can kind of make it their own space a little bit. Yes. Um, and you're there to help guide them through the process. Yes. Oh. And um, um, no, I've, I've lost my train of thought. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, we're definitely uh, MSABC. Um, is an orga well well organized organization uh, that helps men sheds across British Columbia. Another thing that I should mention, mm -hmm. um, Port Coquitlam, if a few guys want to get together, start a men shed, um, we can give them a thousand dollars to help wow, them that's get a good incentive. So Money is not going to stop them getting a men shed. Not going to be a barrier to starting up. Once they get a shed established, mm -hmm and a small group of guys and they've got a shed established, they can apply for $10,000. Right. There's all kinds of organizations that want to help men sheds because it's, uh, it's such a valuable asset mm. for the community. Well, the call goes out to Port Coquitlam then to yeah. get in touch with you. Um, how can they get in touch with you, Mike? Um, we have a website and that's uh, bcmensshed.ca and there's a list of all the sheds in there and also the uh, contact for uh, MSABC, the Men's Sheds Association of British Columbia. We have a Facebook page and uh, if you just go for um, um, Men Helping Men, BC Men's Sheds Men Helping Men, you'll find us there. And uh, you're by, welcome to um, email me at I'm the secretary of the Men's Shed Association, so it's secretary at bcmenshed.ca. Perfect. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us and, and to share information about Men's Shed with us. It's been a pleasure and thank you for the opportunity. Thanks so much for joining us. This is We've Got Issues and we've been speaking with Mike Jennings from the Men's Shed Association of BC. <laughs>
weekly event. We meet every Tuesday at 1030 the Sunstar. And uh, a lot of people just come to the to do that. And then from that, my Jennings, who actually started the Coquitlam Men Shed, said that we would find find a place. We called it turning over rocks. Hey, tell a joke, Ted. Close another the carburetor. <laughs> One of those project of pre-COVID and uh, I got this lawnmower then and uh, we were going to try and teach the kids about our engines and this sort of stuff and of course then the kids all moved away and so we pulled it out and Ted got it fired up and it's coming up in behind that board there's our compressor and stuff like that and uh, this is where we're if we made a little better use of it, it would uh, we could get more stuff in there. But one of our guys took this all apart, cleaned it all up, polished all the brass, and as you can see, some screws that got changed out. They never had Phillips screws back then. <laughs> so these are other examples of Stanley planes used for small piece of that sort of a big long board you want to try to make sure you're, you're staying flat you're not starting to make waves on the top and so it's got a big long base to it so these are all in here with little secures if you pan up there's a wooden lathe up on the top there a wooden lathe a wooden plane well the uh the sunstar restaurant that uh has been mentioned before. I, I've been eating there for years too. And on the front door, there's a little sign that said Coquitlam Men's Shed meets here on Tuesdays. So I thought, I'll look it up. I had a website, so I looked it up and I emailed. I got a hold of Mike Jennings and uh, he told me what day to come down to there and, and here as well. So I, uh, I stopped in here first. I didn't go to the restaurant to meet the guys at first. I just came down here one day and uh, walked in and Mike and, and Doug were here. And uh, after I spoke 20 minutes of hanging around here, I thought that's good enough for me. It's uh, you know, they didn't have quite this much equipment at that time. Cause I joined it probably about a year after it's it had already been established here. So uh, I just, uh, knew I was going to be retiring in the next couple of years after when I first come here and I wanted to be able to have something to do and uh, I hadn't done much woodworking for years and this was a perfect opportunity for something for me to do after retirement. <music>